blessed to be able to develop a relationship with Danny Simmons, Russell, who was Russell's big brother, um, who was a powerful artist, by the way. Um, and I was told about the fact that before I met him, I was told that he had um, poetry readings at his house slash corridor gallery in Brooklyn. And so at that time, I was a member of the Black Panther Collective, and you know, and it was an offshoot of the Panther Party, and I was on the scene, on the poetry scene as well. So I rolled up in there with my, you know, black uh, army hat on and black bandana with some some rough looking dudes. You know, we roll up in there and, um, you know, and, and I had the opportunity to introduce myself to him. And um, <clears throat> I really gained the epiphany when I was um, renting out a brownstone in Brooklyn. I was watching television one day and I saw a deaf comedy jam and I was like, wow mic and audience and a stage and it made perfect sense but I wasn't in a position to do anything with it because I didn't know Russell I didn't know Danny so I kind of bookmarked that and eventually I heard through the grapevine because the scene the poetry scene or whatever the spoken word scene is very incestuous so I heard about these poetry readings at his house rolled up in there told Danny what my epiphany was he was warm to it one thing led to the other what the concept of Russell. Russell brought in Stan Laketon. So now Laketon's father, big time Hollywood director. They had a relationship already with HBO, the Deaf Comedy Jam. It was a match made in heaven. Praise yeah. God. Six seasons on HBO, Peabody Award, Broadway version, Tony Award. And then now, the offshoot from that was Brave New Voices. We got the youth on HBO doing that thing. So it's, it's truly, truly a blessing. You've got to be kidding me. Everything I thought we had, the potential and the possibilities of us now shattered. You took me places I never thought I'd be, did things I never thought I'd do, tasted things I never thought I'd taste. Um. Dr. Kalatasti um, blessed me to be able to come to Berkeley and um, she had given me a shot, you know, to come here and and open me up to her poetry class, a slam class that she has at Berkeley. And the students, as you've seen on stage, are phenomenal and very, very open. So I had the opportunity to um, go over their performance poetry. Not so much the creative writing and but more along the lines of their performance poetry. And it was on point. Did you do it? You said I'm a, I'm a, I started out as a poet. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that's it. I'm sure that's it. Thank you. I'm telling you. Because yes. 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 when you're on stage, yes. it's like, I don't even want her to get off. Yeah, I want to get off. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even want you to get off. I mean, I'm not glad people. You captivate people. You scared me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for everything that you did. Oh, so I have fun with y'all. You know I'm going to miss y'all. Yeah. Brock Kim said rap is rhythm and poetry, right? And I was blessed to be able to be one of the co-founders of Death Poetry Jam. And it's all about time and it's all about God's blessings and all that stuff. And you see, the thing about it is that it was going to go to the mainstream whether I was blessed to do it or not. It's about the movement, you know, it's the zeitgeist, it's the spirit of the time. And so I was blessed to just be at the right time, the right place, able to connect with Danny, who brought the concept to Russell through me, and um, just grateful for it. Spoken word is where rap was 30 years ago. You know what I'm saying? In terms of its purity, in terms of its storytelling, in terms of its message, you know, and, you know, but not to really give rap a bad rap, because all art forms go through what is called a bastardization process. Spoken word is going to go through it, just like rap went through it, just like the blues went through it, just like all other genres, you know. And it's up to us as individuals to maintain the integrity of the art form. Even though the spoken word has been going on for how long? And I mean, for us, that goes back to the days of griots and all that. But by putting it and disseminating it in this way, so many people were made aware who wouldn't have even known, hey, I can, I can use words to express myself. And, 
and to really be her. And as Saul Williams said, so I was just looking at it, he was like, he was saying, tell your children they can name themselves and claim themselves for a new day. And so it was a beautiful thing. Thank you, Ruth George. Thank you, Dr. Poetry Jam. Thank you for coming to work with me. Please. Dr. Tony Medina, who said that uh, poetry provides the um, substance and the thematic depth whereas hip-hop provides the beats and the aesthetic. So that's basically the difference, you know what I'm saying? So hip-hop is more along the lines of the beats and the aesthetic. Poetry provides the thematic depth and the substance. Do you think there's a difference between spoken word and poetry? Um, yeah, well, spoken word basically is a media-driven word. You know what I'm saying? What words do you know that are not, that are not spoken? I am not only the client of the president, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with all due modesty. <laughs> it's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you without proper content to bless you. But I'm still the barber of the Ville. Still slugging like the Louisville. Still above the limerick, verbally wig splitting misfits posing as wordsmiths. For I'm still the czar who raised the bar over shallow reservoirs. Who talks about Mars with low radars, but couldn't reach a star if they were kissing cousins to a quasar. Couldn't hit a note that they were Julio Iglesias. But I'm still a no limit soldier, slash wordsmith and sculptor, pen mighty than the Glock in your holster. Yet they pose to be eclectic, but they only alphabetic, so I bring the antiseptic to the naysayers. Turn their haters to Quakers and non-believers to prostrators who pay homage to a science that's futuristic like Nostradamus. So my words flip like a bull whip matador. Unorthodox metaphors get locked off my south pole. But they on the inside, but I'm on the outside of the margin. Having their grandma begging pardon for draft dodging. If I still run rings around orbits, suspend them like ornaments for a thousand sheets is less absorbent. Like come on, come on, come on, chameleons. They become reptilians between philosophers and comedians, made with artificial ingredients. But I'm still the phenomenon who mastered the lexicon and all echelons. Turn vagabonds to pantheons. For I am too much, too late, and too blatant, yet still bringing the heat to Satan. And they ain't making more noise than I am making. But they be coming around the mountains when I come, like my three sons, they be stunned, doubling my idioms and puns. But when I'm kinko, I go flip mode to get two to the head trip mode. I brought the rhyme to the reason for treason because I'm seasoned, so in tongues I be speaking. Well, I never gave weight to low birth rates to see the park at Orlando Lake. Well, I turn old styles like Argyle into exile, Jew or Gentile, Saint of Mental. I'm still an insurrectionist, an anti-pacifist. Scholar of nice sticks and politics, whether wrist to wrist or fist to fist, I'm a borderline anarchist with a bandana wrapped around my both the list. Anti-social, you get a socialist. Into the struggle, I toast this because I'm still, you heard? Thank you. Nice.